So without question, the most important skill that a technical person can have beyond, of course, their technical skills that are relevant to them is the ability to communicate and explain highly technical information to a non-technical person. A lot of people think that speaking in highly technical terms is what makes them look smart, but quite the opposite, actually. What makes you look smart is being able to communicate your point to any audience. And we've all done it, and that includes myself. We get asked a question about the piece of software that we're building, and instead of giving a simple answer about what's going on, we give a technical answer that nobody understands. So maybe Rebecca in accounting asks, why is the site so slow? And you go on to tell her, oh, it's because we're misusing B-tree indexes and because we're not doing our joins correctly and our queries unoptimized. Whereas instead you could have said, oh, so the process that we used to combine all this information together was probably just not done in the best way possible. However, there are usually improvements that we can make, and so we're going to try to make those. And she'll probably say that she understands because you've used common terminology that everybody understands. Everybody understands the concept of combining things, and people understand the concept of improving things. And I assure you that people like to feel like they're a part of something, they like to feel like they're involved in what's going on, and the best way to involve them in such things is to make sure they understand what you're saying. There's a lot of situations in which you're going to encounter non-technical people and you're going to be put in a situation where you have to explain technical things to them. Most companies that are building any kind of product are going to involve a bunch of people across that organization to help build things that are relevant to what they're doing. This is especially true for software that's built for internal purposes only. A lot of times when you're building internal use software, you're going to have to talk to people who are going to use a specific function on that software. And oftentimes they're going to give you instructions or feedback or suggestions on what they want it to do. Now, many times, but not always, you'll have a project manager that might do this for you. However, in my experience, a lot of the times is requests that come in through project managers often need to have a follow-up meeting that involves the stakeholder themselves plus developers. And it's in these meetings where you're going to be doing a lot of talking and they need to understand what you're telling them. So the question becomes, what strategies can you use to explain technical information to non-technical people? And really what it comes down to is what is the type of person that you're talking to and what is their general knowledge level? Non-technical people fall into roughly two groups. The first group is non-technical people who have no technical knowledge of any kind. The second group is non-technical people who have had a lot of exposure to technical things, but they themselves are non-technical people. There's technically a third group, which we're not really going to discuss at length here, and that's technical people who are technical in a different way than you are. This would be like trying to explain database issues to a network engineer. So for the first group of people, the people who are completely non-technical, the best way to communicate technical information to them is going to be by using analogies. This means taking what you want to explain and converting it to an example that contains elements that they're going to be aware of. So let's go back to the example with Becky and accounting where the site was going slow and there was something wrong with the query. So maybe you fixed that problem and you fixed it by adding indexes to your database and you went up to Becky's office and you said, hey, I fixed the site, it's nice and fast now. And she says, oh, well, how'd you do that? The absolute wrong thing to say in this case is that you added indexes to the database. What you can say instead is, if you think of a database like a book, what I did is I put a bunch of bookmarks in the book. What that lets me do is get to a specific location in the book very fast and because of that, the site is now faster. So let's do another example. Imagine the owner of your company comes down and says, hey, we're expecting a lot more orders. Will our system be able to handle it? The wrong thing to say would be, yeah, we're going to use a round robin load balancer with a pool of servers on the back end and then a multi-master database cluster. You're not going to want to say that because he has no clue what any of that is. Instead, you could just say, yeah, we have the ability to combine multiple machines together and that's how we'll ensure that we keep up with the order volume. Not only does that convey exactly what he's asking, but it does so in a way that he understands. Let's do one last example. So imagine your business sells a bunch of things online and the customer service manager at this business is receiving a lot of calls from people saying they can't put their purchase through. And you go investigate the problem and you find that your payment processors API is returning a bunch of 500 errors. And now you want to explain to the customer service manager what's going on. So the wrong thing to say would be, yeah, our payment processor has a JSON API. And when we're contacting that API, instead of getting a 200 SAS code, we're getting a 500 internal server error. What you could say instead is that our system is contacting the payment processing system. And instead of doing the charge, they're reporting that they're having an error right now. And that's why the payments aren't going through. But we're 100% positive that the issue is on their end because they told us so. 
As far as the second group of people goes, the people who are not technical, but they've been exposed to a lot of technical things, they'll actually appreciate having some technical explanations told to them. And this takes some awareness and good judgment to get right, because you have to know what sorts of things this person has been exposed to. So for instance, if you know a person that's been exposed to, say, AWS a lot, then it's okay to use the term like EC2 to describe a server. And of course, they might say, what's EC2? And you just say, oh, that's Amazon's virtual machine offering. These sorts of people who have been exposed to technical things a lot are more likely to say they don't understand something and to ask for clarifications. The people who are purely non-technical are more likely to just nod their head as if they understand it, even though they don't. It's just really easy to forget that not everybody around you has the exact same knowledge that you do. So the best thing to do is to know your audience and just take a second to think before you speak. And once you get really good at this, you're going to be the guy or gal that people want to talk to. And that's only going to make you just that much more valuable. And also likable, because nobody wants to be talked down to. And that's it for the video. If you have any feedback or any questions about anything I put out, or if you have anything to add, perhaps you've been in this situation before, definitely leave that below in the comments. Thanks all for watching. I really appreciate it.